I uh, took the time to mention those who are <laughs> former senators and former governors to continue to make the point that are the mid area that these people don't want to go anywhere. <laughs> Senator Fabio, you do have Mr. Alex James. Thank you very much for the very kind invitation to be a part of the launch of this very important work. Politics that works, what schools and seminars will teach you about winning elections. This here is a book co authored by uh, the two gentlemen. But I think that two important uh, promises are contained in this whole effort. The first is that uh, this book will teach what we don't know already about winning elections and the sorts of things that are not taught anywhere. And frankly, those who are here, I can name a few who can teach us so many things about uh, what no one has yet taught you about winning elections. As a matter of fact, when I came uh, into politics, I really thought I knew all about I mean, I was always on the side like watching it. And I really thought I knew all that could possibly happen in politics. I mean, having the in one way or the other at all. But I can assure you that the past few years have taught me that there is still so much that you cannot even be taught in any book. You cannot, no matter what the book may say. Because there are too many wonderful things that happen. <laughs> and I'm sure that those of us who have been participants, you know, will probably be able to tell you that there are just too many wonderful things that can happen. The second is that this is an intergenerational effort. One uh, between the 60 something year old uh, Senator Femi Ujudu and the 20 something, I believe, year old Alex Adinule James. So both uh, have, are trying to teach important lessons here that the best way that this will work is where, the, where there is an intergenerational hardship, the young and the old, as opposed to uh, any attempt to defy the tenets of liberal politics by saying that it is one group or the other. The type of politics that we all prefer, or that most of us will prefer, is liberal politics free enterprise, democracy, individual freedom. It means that there can be no discrimination, either on the basis of age, or gender, or political persuasion. So that is why we negotiate our way through these things. And I think the point was made by some of the speakers. So in liberal democracy, it's about negotiation. Gender, there will be negotiations on the basis of gender. Women will say we don't have representation. Young people will say we don't have representation. And then we'll start talking about quotas or affirmative action or some solution or the other. And the simple reason is that the very basis of liberal democracy is that everybody is invited to the table. How you get there, I you know, liked uh, some of what has been said. Whether you bring your table there or your chair there yourself, or you get there through the window, however you get there, you get there. <laughs> I'm very strongly of the view that everyone must be invited to this party. The important thing is to ensure that we have as as, as well as possible a level playing field, as as well as that is possible. Now the problem also with, with liberal politics is money, is money. Who has resources? Because resources will also to a large extent determine who can play the game. So if, I mean, so for example, a, a person, somebody, I don't want to uh, go into any of the names, but somebody who has a major company today, who has resources, you know, will probably be able to get into the game faster than a 60-year-old man with all his experience, but no money. So there is that as well. So there are barriers. And I think that what is important is for us to see how we can remove those barriers as much as possible so that there is a level playing field. What I've experienced just in, uh, in, in, in serving in the position of vice president for the past few years, 
and having the opportunity to bring on board uh, young people and new, and, and some old people too, I mean, elderly people, relative them, is that the quality of contribution is not necessarily defined by age. And that's the honest truth. I have so many young people who work with me, very brilliant young people who work with me. And they are not intimidated, I must tell you, by anybody older than them sitting at the table. They're just not intimidated. Yeah. I mean, so I have the youngest person who was working with me, he's 22 years old. Right? Next year, I just came out of the university and all of that. But extremely brilliant. And very a, a lady, very assertive, extremely assertive. She knew her audience, and I had, you know, same with me. And of course, Ahmad, who we spoke a few minutes ago, thirty-seven year old, you know, is special advisor on infrastructure. I have a special advisor on political affairs, who is a sixty year old, <laughs> or a doctor, our ambassador Tiko, who is also probably close to sixty. But then there are so many, you know, very young people. A Balki society who is sitting over there is uh, my legal advisor. She's a special, senior special assistant, Nico, right? And Balki has an interesting, she has an interesting uh, history. Balki was uh, married off at the age of 13, had her first child at the age of 14, right? Through all of that, her mom made sure that she got education and she is today, today a professor. She is a professor today, right? And she's still uh, under the age of 40, right? With all of that, has three kids, three grown kids, but she's still under the age of 40, right? But the truth of the matter is that she comes to the job with experience, the kind of experience that nobody else has. She comes to the job with you know, with a variety of ideas. Mm -hmm. Come uh, so I don't say, oh, everyone who is here. So I, I think we must focus our minds a little more on what people bring to the table. What are you bringing to the table? I, 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 I'm very, I don't engage on the basis of it because that is real life. I mean, we started, I was just asking Raul, I met Raul for the first time when uh, we were the transition committee in 1999, or the transition committee of the, of the, the new Lagos State government then. He was barely 42 years old. You know, I was just about the same age at that time. We had served, he had served as active, he was campaign manager for uh, the Ashiwaju Bolatinubu's campaign at that time. He was his campaign manager and ran the entire operation. He ran all the, you know, the entire campaign. He was not much younger than then, when he was campaign manager. But he's been at it since then, you know. I was coming to this, I'd been advisor to the Attorney General of the Federation when I was 31. So I had some coming into this. So there is a, there is a place also, and I think Baba uh, uh, Kudiru made the point at that. There's a place for preparation. There's a place for getting you know, getting ready. It's no point saying that I've become a Minister for Finance at the age of 25 because I'm a smart kid. It takes more than that. If you're going to deal in the Nigerian system, in this system of ours, to work through all that is required to be any, I think you need some experience. You need a bit of it, but you don't have to be very old. But it helps if you've served in one capacity or the other as a special advisor, special assistant, whatever. All of those positions are very central positions. And I don't agree, unfortunately, that a special assistant of EA is, a, is somewhat, you know, it's not, a, uh, it's not a very serious position. It is. Every special assistant that we have, and these ones I have, all of them take very important decisions. And they take those important decisions on their own. They are, they are the truth, and the truth, is, the truth is that the way the government, the way governments are set up, everybody plays it, they can play very seriously. Depends on how serious you are. It just depends on how serious. You will find a 50-year-old man who is lazy, who has no idea. You will find a 23-year-old man who is lazy, has no ideas. Hopefully, in a few years, you might get brighter and I get more, you might start doing some more serious work. But 
I, my experience is that everybody, you know, they're just they're just such uh, a variety of people and a variety of talents, and some are older than others, some are younger, male or female. So I really would like us to zero in on the real needs of our nation. I think this country needs the best minds. We have, if we look at all of the variety of talents that we have, we have everything that it takes for a great country. But it is the coming together of the like, of like minds, the coming together of people who agree on the same things, old or young. I don't think we should divide ourselves out of those minds. Because this country can be great, but we need that coming together of the very best minds. Whether they are women, male, female, men, you know, or people of whatever age. So I think that our, our central, for me, my central concern is how do we get, you know, the very best people to work in the interest of this country? How do we get the very best people to project uh, the, the image of the country? And I must say that politics and elect, especially partisan politics, has not necessarily delivered on a lot of the promises that we expect from partisan politics. What you find is that Many times you are disappointed by even just the results, you know, and what happens, you know, the whole process. Those who are able to get a chance to go forward. So, okay, so sometimes you are disappointed, but that's the nature of democracy. My view is that we must continue to work at it. We must continue to make the sacrifice that is required to be able to get our views across. And we must continue to organize to do so. We can't give up. We can't say, well, things are so difficult, it's so difficult to enter the space, and so we, we, we throw up our arms. If we keep at it, one day we'll get the right, we'll get the right results, we'll get the right means. Every country, every country deserves excellent leadership and deserves the best it can get. But excellent leadership doesn't come by accident. It doesn't come you know, by a lack of effort. We just have to keep taking the effort. I was telling someone uh, the other day that when we were talking about the uh, the police, I was saying that a country, one of the, uh, the UK, for example, dissolved its police force almost three times. Just dissolved and started again. Three times before it got it right. So a country evolves. People evolve. Ideas evolve. So we must be afraid. Of even where we are today, I mean, you know, when people look and say, oh, oh, you know, things are so bad that I've never seen it, like, you know, always be careful about people who are always talking about the good old days, you know. Be careful. They either have a loss of memory or yeah, there is something else. <laughs> but all that you do this thing. I mean, look, people will tell you that, oh, many years ago, things were so great. In fact, sometimes today when you hear people talking about some good old days, you wonder whether we were not in the same, we were not in the same country. So there is, there, there, we mustn't give up in, in that process, and we mustn't keep looking back. The challenges of today are meant for those of us who are here and alive today, and they are meant to be solved by the young people. And, I, and as I always say, you know, I mean, there is no better time to be alive. This is the best time to be young. Is the best time in Nigeria. To be those who are young today have the best opportunity ever. In my own day, when I was a professor, I had to, if I had to research to write an article, it will take me, it will take me weeks. Today, I can just do that with my iPad. I can get onto any library anywhere in the world and get all the information and write my article in hours, you know, rather than weeks or months or years. It was uh, for, uh, Zakaria, the uh, Farid Zakaria, the CNN guy who was saying once that in your smartphone, like the smartphones we carry today, our smartphones carry a hundred times more power than the Apollo uh, spacecraft that took men to the moon. Just the smartphones that you and I have today carry a hundred times more power, more computing power. So when it, where our, 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 our generational challenges have the generational solutions. Let's stop complaining. Let's just face the issue and solve them. Whether we're in government or we're planning to get into government, however we want to do it, let's just get to the table and solve some of these problems. 
I'd like to thank uh, the authors of this great book. And I've had an opportunity to look at the book. And I think it's going to be very, very, very worthwhile reading for those of you who haven't uh, seen it yet or who haven't read it. And especially those who want to go into politics. It promises, as the authors have said, be a manual for you know, uh, being able to get into, uh, not just to get nominated, but also to win, to actually win the election. I'm also looking forward to uh, studying the book more closely, you know, because we still have a lot of questions.